my name is Jolin Edenshaw. I'm a carver here. I've uh, known David for uh, since he was pretty young there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've uh, we worked together in the forest um, doing uh, doing uh, monumental cedar surveys and and uh, looking at high to medicinal plants and whatnot and and you know all, all that work was sort of around uh, protecting those areas. Um, so you know, so I know uh, know I'm pretty good through that. Yeah, just to hang out in the woods together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's awesome out there. Oh yeah. So um, mainly, uh, mainly now I'm just carving, um, uh, and and part of the carving is is to learn and, and uh, tell about our stories. Out at the uh, High Island, there, there's there's uh, a few old villages um, around that area, and uh, some pretty good stories. Um, there's there's uh, one story of a, a, a giant spider that lived up along the, the north face or or northwest face, I guess of um, the hill of Tau and, and as the Haidas would come, you know, they'd be trying to get to North Beach so they'd be passing underneath and the spider would come down on them and, and eat them. So they'd have to hike all the way around the back way and, uh, you know, the spider really caused a menace to them. So after a long time, two uh, young Haida trying to sort of make a name for themselves some warriors uh, figured they could get it so one guy sharpened a stick on both ends and the other one made his bow and arrows and spears and and uh, they uh, went and the one guy walked right underneath where that spider was and the spider came down and wrapped his jaws around him and he put that stick up and the stick stabbed into the jaws on either side so that uh, it couldn't close on him and he held him there tight and the other guy came and started spearing him well first uh, shot him with arrows and then speared him and killed the spider and they cut him open and all the human bones and stuff were inside and they went up to the cave and they could find you know more more human bones and stuff so he's uh, you know able to sort of rid rid the uh, toil area of that giant spider um, makes it safe for you guys to go out there with David now. <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah, I know it's uh it's always got that that uh spiritual side to to walking up the hill too. Like you can uh it's an old forest and you can feel feel that it's uh it's not only physical, it's the supernatural beings that are, that reside around there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all along that area, there's, there's stories. Mm -hmm. Like the first, uh, first totem pole that they found, actually, you could see um, from Toll Hill, you know, looking out onto the water there, you can see the area where, where um, the first people would have, uh, saw that pole there going along and they looked down into the water and, and they seen a village just like a Haida village but it was a killer whale village underneath and it had the totem poles standing in front of the pole or the houses and uh, from there that's how we learned and it's actually the, the village where, where those people were from was right near uh, the Delcatla Slough so uh, the whole, whole place from here to there is connected that way. Heck yeah. Yeah, and and, and uh, talking about all these stories, you did all the uh, the plaques out there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So tried to get a few of the few of the area stories just to uh, um, you know let let our visitors you know know history of our our stories out there. Yeah. 
it really brings like a, a more uh, awareness to the area and, uh, makes me uh, it, for me it's more responsibility it makes me want to like, take care of the area more because it's it's got those stories and it's got that cultural aspect uh, that uh, just there and it's good to uh, it's good to spread that knowledge so those people can everybody can actually uh, uh, value the area like yeah. like I do a lot of us other people do that's important eh? like, like so much of uh, you know what's happened as far as uh, the economy on Haida Gwaii has been about taking taking away from the island you know taking the fish taking the trees mm -hmm. and um, you know we got to get to a point where you know people can come here and leave something here right leave leave uh, an economic uh, imprint for us mm -hmm. you know without taking stuff you know taking the stories and taking the memories but but leaving our land intact mm -hmm. you know and I think that's what your project uh, what you put for your uh, biking project will accomplish yeah, right tide. yeah I'm re yeah that's that's a huge aspect of what I'm trying to do because there's just there was it's just been logging and fishing and extracting resources for so long and it's just a fraction of the money that we see goes goes to our people and I'm trying to do a business where uh, it's sustainable for our land and won't won't uh, won't degrade our ecosystems around us. Yeah, even even the tourist uh, industry that is developed around here, um, you know, like a lot of it like is becoming local based and stuff. But um, but uh, you know, in a lot of ways, it wasn't hired to run and it wasn't you know giving back to the community. Um, you know, it's about you know, bringing people in to fish and then fly out, and they, you know they never really spent time with with the Haida people or with the communities and you know not really enjoying the land as, as we know it you know they're just sort of here to uh, play with their food and get out of here yeah it really brings an appreciation to to where they're at where 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 our people have lived from time memorial and it's, it's, it's important to me to bring this business uh, bring that with me in this business and uh, yeah trying to, trying to do good with it and, you know first starting off and yeah yeah it's exciting to see uh, see it develop and see it come to fruition oh, uh,